He hovers, he brews, he comes around, he gently knocks, he whispers, but will we answer the call and invite him in for salvation? Salvation means wholeness. It's just the very beginning when you receive Christ as your savior. Did you know that? Salvation is not a one day experience. There is a beginning, but there is a, it's the beginning of a very, very wide open universe to the Father and his eternal love for us. And so every day, salvation, wholeness, completion, prosperity in every area of your life is what God has for you. So he is the anchor for your soul. In this season, when we talk about, we think of the boats out there anchoring, they're solid, they're rock solid. He is the anchor of your soul. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Seems like everybody's hearing me without the microphone. Tom, did you find that? Okay, let me know if you do. And if it's my fault, I will do better next time. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> One of my favoriteest prayers, favoriteest, I put that in my dictionary for you English majors. Lord, help me to do better next time. Help me to do better next time. And he will. If you're serious, he will. That's your humility and that's your repentance. And after that comes refreshing. It's amazing. Go ahead, Dan. You're trying? Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the bridge. Thank you, Father, for the bridge. Zebra Katia Glende de Boko Selekende. Okay. One of the things you do as a parent with young children is you never ask them what they want to eat. <laughs> or husbands. Boy, I'm really stirring the part now. I was looking for the bridge and I just found it. Bam! Two messages, fork in the road right now. Making pearls manifesting diamonds or always privileged, always blessed. I'm giving you a choice. Oh, excellent. That means I can give them both, Lord, because they didn't pick. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. I want them to carry you out of here. the music play. Come on, Dan. God's amazing mercy and kindness is here today. My responsibility is to love you and feed you. And that's what I have a passion to do. Out of a lifestyle of knowing what I'm saying is true. Where's Lyle? 
Lyle, when you have a chance, see if the, um, help me, Jesus, the tripod is in the, this room. Just bring it to me when you have it. There's a real large burden on my heart. And over the last few weeks, I heard my wife did amazing yesterday. Thank you for being mature. And uh, when the Lord opens a door for me to go and minister somewhere one else, you still come and you still receive. I love that this ministry is not a one-man show. I love it. I love it. I love it. And that you can receive so many different leaders and anointed people in here, including yourself, whoever it is. They were rocked in Holyoke yesterday, uh, last week, and they were blessed very much. The Lord says in Habakkuk 2, 2, the prophet Habakkuk says, I will stand at my guard post and station myself on the tower, and I will keep watch to see what he will say to me. And what answer I will give as his spokesman when I am reproved. The word reproved means corrected. He, in chapter one, he's just having a conversation with God, basically as a prophet, as an in-between the people, knowing what the people are saying in Israel and what's going on in their circumstances. He's coming to him, he's, he's saying, Lord, you know this, and Lord this, and Lord that. And I never saw it before, but when I saw this scripture, it says he stood, he stood in his position waiting on God. And he says, and I will give as his spokesman whatever God says to me. He says, when I am reproved. The word reproved means corrected. Now the Lord has given me revelation after revelation in my own personal journey with him. That unless you love correction, you're not going to go very far in life. And this is a great example of a man of God, his name was Habakkuk, that was so passionate about God's perspective on things that he was even willing to come before him with his whole heart, share things that he knew he might get corrected, but willing to receive that. The whole heart of God, when it comes to correction, is to get us on the right path to experience the life and be the blessing we're called to be. It's not supposed to be a negative word. It's become a negative word for a lot of people. And people unconsciously live like this and with walls up because of negative things that have happened. But it's, spo it's supposed to have a very, very profound, positive connotation in your soul. Instruction and, and correction, according to Proverbs, should be our highest passion because it is better, according to Proverbs, silver and gold. It's better than that. The Lord says that vision means a mental sight, a revelation, a dream. It's what's guiding you. It's what's moting, motivating you, inspiring you. Jesus was known for enduring the cross and, and, and despising the shame of the cross for the joy that was set before him. Because of what Jesus saw on the other side of the cross, he endured the suffering. He endured the affliction. Because he saw what was on the other side. The Lord wants to give you the ability to see. Because when you see, you will have the ability to overcome every situation. It's a very key ingredient. It says that to Habakkuk, he's saying, write this down. Write down this revelation, which I'm not going to say what his revelation was. Because it's not the point of today. He says, write it down so plainly. That when they, they can run with it, not walk with it, it's so plain, it's so big inside of their heart, they can actually run with it. The word plain means, you're going to love this, Lisa. The word plain means when he's saying to the prophet, make these things perfectly clear to my people. Make them plain. It actually means to dig, to engrave into them. Explain it so clearly 
that it becomes part of them. So they, it's so much a part of them, they can run with it. In other words, no, fat, no matter how fast life is going, and in this society, this is, I believe, even more significant than in their society, that no matter how fast we're either caught up with stuff, or we're bouncing from here to here, maybe even in the will of God, but even if it's not in the will of God, that things can get so fast and things can uh, bombarding us so fast that the Lord, this is, this is very significant, that whatever his vision is, whatever his guidelines are, need to be so deep inside of you that no matter how fast you're going, it's part of you and you don't get moved from that place. Are you with me? So... A few weeks ago, honey, I need you to find, you're, you're much better at flipping this. I need you to find unloving spirit versus loving spirit. I need to do, for anybody that's new today, get ready because I'm going to do something and I don't want to scare you. I'm going to go bam, but it's going to be louder, okay? I'm being very merciful and gracious. I told you there was a spirit of mercy here. There is a bam in the spirit that the Lord wants to impart into you today he wants to do it every single day and the reason he wants to do it every single day is because he cares so much about you that he wants you not only to receive his goodness but he wants you to be a distributor of his goodness he needs you to be a distributor of his goodness even more in this day and their hour where the spirit of stupid is trying to devour you got the spirit of stupid on people rejecting the President of the United States that they should be accepting and praying for. You got people who are in government positions supporting the spirit of stupid. God needs you to operate in the spirit of wisdom. He needs you to be a shining light. He does not need you to be devoured with the spirit of stupid. He needs his word and his will so deep inside of you that no matter how, things, how many things are flying around you, it's him that's inside of you and it's him that's coming out of you. Are you with me? Irritation manifestations. Say that after me. Irritation manifestations. Your response to every irritation that comes your way or that you feel determines whether you produce life or death. Determines whether you do something positive or negative. This is critical. Now let me do a little review. There's two spirits in the world. There's one called loving spirit. That's from God. There's one called an unloving spirit. That is not from our Father. The scripture says God is love. Satan is the opposite. The devil is the opposite of God. He once was with God, but he wasn't satisfied. He complained. He murmured. Got a bunch of, bunch, of, bunch of people feeling sorry for him. A third of the angels. This is why it goes in society all the time. Because it already happened in heaven. And it's prevalent in society today. That we, when we are irritated, we look for people to justify our irritation. Don't do that. Because now you are imitating the devil and Satan and not your father. This is critical, guys. I told you there's a bam in the spirit. It's very strong. You must, you must ask God to help you. Because you are either on a nanosecond basis, on a daily basis, in your head... Or in the presence of people. In other words, in your head, what's going on in your soul or manifesting out of you is either a loving spirit or an unloving spirit. And you and I are totally responsible. No excuses. No justification. It was not Pam's fault. I am totally responsible for every one of my actions. On my phone, off of my phone, in my head, out of my head, in my bed, out of my bed, behind closed doors in the open air. I had a conversation over text messaging the other day, and I reached out to one of my leaders and I said, hey, did you talk to such and such? And the person said, yeah. And my comment was, such and such. 
Two days later in the secret place, this is what is so great about hanging out with Jesus. Hey, did you know, have you ever seen that show called The Tank? Tanked? What? Tanked? Tanked. It's on what channel? Animal Planet. Just sounds weird. A station is called Animal Planet. But anyways, these guys had a dream to make big fish tanks for celebrities. And so they, aquariums. And I, so when I was watching this, because I love tropical fish. I love flowers. I love everything that's colorful and creative. It just makes me fall in love with Jesus all over again. Now, I know the show is about excess and these celebrities spending tons of money. And I could sit there judging them. And you know what I could do with that money? <laughs> I could cry the blues or I could just get what God was wanting me to get out of the show. And that was, you are so totally cool. A yellow. There's an eel called a canary eel. It is bright yellow. Didn't even know that God made one of those things. So I just, when I, I got to watch it, I think I watched three episodes in a row. I don't know how that happened, but I got blessed somehow. God was ministering to me the whole time. It was like a cool fish. Every time I turned around, there was another cool fish. Well, here's the whole point of me telling you that, is there's a fish that goes around eating parasites off of other fish. I got a revelation. Spending time with Jesus paying attention to the Holy Spirit. He's like that fish. So two days after I sent this text to someone in conversation, thinking it was innocent, you know, okay, the Holy Spirit fish comes up to me and he just picks a little parasite off of me and he says, uh, your comment was a little off. You were a little irritated and a little annoyed. And out of that annoyance and out of that irritation, you spoke. You need to apologize to the leader because that was a bad example this is 5 30 in the morning i love correction i love instruction i love to be parasite clean Ow! so picked up my phone texted the leader i said please forgive me i just realized that i spoke out of irritation out of annoyance i hold myself accountable would you please forgive me the leader was very gracious about six hours later, six hours later, I had to wait six hours. And then I'm thinking, oh no, what's this leader thinking? He hasn't texted me back. You ever have one of those moments? Finally, I got the text. You ever have one of those moments? I finally got the text. I know what the person's thinking. You know, I could have just resolved it by calling the person. Not at 5.30 in the morning, I was gracious. And they said, yep, I forgive you. You know, I thought something was a little off with your comment. <laughs> you know, people know when you're talking if things are a little off. It's better when you catch them on the front end than the back end. Thank God for the mercy of God that there's people around us that will forgive us and have mercy on us. And we also have a God that will help us get better and better. The Lord wants to take you to a radical new level of sensitivity and paying attention to what is going on in your soul every nanosecond, day and night. So much that he sent Barbie Breathed in here and spoke about dreams because God is so cool that he'll even show you the condition of your soul and what's going on that you don't know in your dreams so you can wake up and get an interpretation and find out that God was talking to you because he wants to bless you and he wants to help you. That's how cool God is. Making pearls manifesting diamonds. Words and actions that inspire, lift, and loose producing life and freedom instead of discouragement and depression and bondage. You and I get to choose. Let's go back to the review. We reviewed this. Let's review the last thing from a few weeks ago. How many remember that the pearl is made out of a grain of sand that has entered the shell of the oyster? Now it happens in other creatures. They, they're called mollusks. Mollusks. Thank you for all the correction. I appreciate it. 
I love that now I have a choir of correction. Thank you, Father. <laughs> you said you love correction. Okay, I got it. Just calm down a little bit. <laughs> Grain of sand, or that you're going to love this one. I'm adding to the message. Be patient with me. I heard this three weeks ago. You need to hear it about 17,000 times. So get ready for a very long series. And I will change the title just to keep you excited for a moment. But then I'm going to hit the same material from a different angle. You and I, here's the point of me talking about Habakkuk and establishing the vision. Because you and I are oysters. You and I are called to make pearls and manifest diamonds. Out of every irritation that enters the, check this out, the internal organs of an oyster. You're going to love this. Gabe, I don't think you're going to be able to be that relaxed after I say this. Allie, you're definitely going to do a dance. I'm just warning you. The internal organs of the oyster are called their mantle. If the oyster does not secrete the necessary ingredients. No, actually, I pronounce. Thank you so much for saying that. I said it wrong last time, and I stand corrected. I thought it was lycra. I found out in further research, research it's called nicra. N-A-C-R-E. Nicra. I stand corrected. Nicra. There's a whole massive scientific thing that I can't explain now that happens in the chemistry of the seawater and inside the oyster and these components all come together to secrete this substance called nicra so when the floating food comes in you know those things that kind of just float into your life and you know they just kind of get under your skin Ooh. you know when you do one of these or you <clears throat> you know all kinds of sounds come out of you you know that something just got in there the Lord wants you to pay attention. Literally, in the ocean, if a grain of sand or it's a floating piece of food goes into the mantle of the oyster, it's the internal organs that are fragile and, and delicate and, and, and it must be protected because if it's not secreted, it will do damage to the internal organs. Oh, I'm preaching now. The internal organs of the oyster. So the oyster responds, say responds, in a life-giving way. He doesn't resent. I don't know. Do they have he's or she's? Okay. They don't respond out of resentment. They rejoice and they celebrate. And they say, this is an opportunity to make a pearl. You're not wearing your pearls today. You have some pearls. Okay. Now, this has nothing to do with Rachel, but here's the point for the, some of you that read my text message yesterday. The culture we live in are more concerned about wearing pearls and wearing diamonds instead of making pearls and manifesting diamonds. That's not our calling. Thank God if you have a diamond ring on. Thank God if you have pearls. Personally, I cash them in and give me the money. I was just joking. <laughs> I was just checking to see if you're all awake. Come on, smile a little bit. Don't be that hard on me. <laughs> I got him. I got him that time. We're called to make pearls and manifest diamonds. We're called to be the light of the world. The Bible says if, you, if, the, if you've lost your salt, your ability to preserve, your ability to produce life, you might just throw away the salt. So here's the deal. Whether it's something floating into the mantle. See, scripturally, you and I have a mantle. That is our identity. That is our calling. And the irritations by the enemy, the things that come at you to poke you. I, I found out there's something on Facebook called poked. I have no idea what it is. I asked Christy because I thought she would know. She says, Dad, don't even pay attention to that. I said, thank God I don't have to pay attention to it. I just heard about it. So here's the revelation for all you Facebook people to modernize the message for the, all the young fellas and girls in this place to show you that I am totally in touch with you. <laughs> 
is when you feel an irritation, just say, ooh, I've been poked. And this is an opportunity for me. The opportunity is to make a pearl out of that irritation. Now, see, the way you make pearls is you rejoice when you're irritated. That's the first step in making a pearl. Resentment, if an oyster... <clears throat> Did I do that as good as Judah and Talia? They have spitting contests, my grandchildren. Now, I know that didn't come from me. So now I have to wonder. What? Gabriel and Rachel are spitting? At each other? Hey, they got to be getting it from somewhere. Okay, I'll talk to this side. I'm getting in trouble on this side. If the oyster spit out that grain of sand, a pearl would never be created. If they spit out the irritant tint that got under their skin. Have you heard that phrase? You know, that's just getting under my skin. You know, we, you know like we're justified. Well, you obviously have a problem. And so why don't you do something about it? Why don't you make a pearl out of it instead of complain about it and be resentful? It's time to rejoice. This is an opportunity to make a pearl and manifest a diamond. This message is so good. Jesus is calling and congratulating me before I get done. This is so awesome. Aren't you glad I came back from Holyoke? Okay, I can tell this message is going to be continued. 2 Corinthians 4, 1. This is Apostle Paul. For those that don't know who Apostle Paul was, he was a religious zealot who killed Christians. God turned his passion and his zealousy into something good. He knocked him off his horse, talked to him, corrected him. For three days he couldn't see. God sent a prophet to him, a man of God to him, prayed for him. He got his sight back. Paul was so grateful that, the Lord, that he encountered the Lord. He became one of the biggest proponents of Christianity in his days and wrote majority of the New Testament. Major turnaround. Tremendous. So he says in 2 Corinthians, addressing the Corinthian church, he says in chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Therefore, since we have this ministry, just as he's... Just as we received mercy from God, say mercy from God, granting us salvation. Did you hear what the prophet just said after praise and worship? Or I can't remember exactly what she said. She was talking about salvation. You know why we lose our passion as Christians? It's not really as much as the circumstances and negativity and disappointments. It's we forgot what we were given. See, if you really remember what Jesus did for you, matter of fact, the Holy Spirit has me on a whole new season. Yes. Perry Stone says the communion meal, he has this title, Perry Stone. He says the meal that heals, and he's talking about the communion elements. And, uh, and I heard this years ago, but, and I wasn't even thinking about it, but uh, the Lord has me every morning before I go downstairs, I take some of Rachel's food. I mean... <laughs> Had something bread, something that's real convenient. Rachel says, she hasn't said this to me. She's just getting a revelation. I thought there was a mouse in the bread because there's these pieces of bread broken off of my bread. Now you got the revelation. It wasn't a mouse. It was just me, Grampian. Um, matter of fact, do you want to know? I don't know why I'm picking on Rachel and Gabe so much. I, I think it's because they're being mature to a whole new level. Do you know what she said to her daughter the other day at the pool, at Christie's pool? I walked out. I'm battling a fever. And, and, and so these, these essential oil queens around me say, slap that oil on you and pray for yourself. Anointing oil prayer, do it up, man. So I put the melaleuca on. I put the peppermint on. I put the oregano on. Those things stink. <laughs> they stink worse than my trash bag. And they're supposed to heal me? I, I, I am teachable. Slap that stuff. Don't give me a one drop. Lather me up. I walk out of the house after taking a power nap and Eliana goes to her mother. Eliana's in the pool and, and uh, she says, Mommy, why does the water stink? This smells bad. <laughs> Rachel says, it's Grampy. <laughs> she just 
told my granddaughter that I stink. The truth was I did. I really smelled bad. The sickness went away. The flies went away. The mosquitoes went away. The ticks went away. They moved out. They left. They didn't even sleep. Their grandchildren had to sleep at Christie's last night. I mean, that's how bad I stunk, you know. So if you want to try some, you want to smell really bad, you know, see them about essential oils. They work really good. Why am I getting sidetracked? It must be because you need to laugh a little bit, I guess. It must be a healing anointing. Here, here we go. Let's close this thing up in the next couple hours. Therefore, since we have this ministry, just as we receive mercy from God, granting us salvation. See, Paul continued to be victorious because this was his ever-present remembrance. It wasn't on the stonings where he was killed. It wasn't on the shipwrecks. It wasn't trying to help people and get bit by a snake. It wasn't focused on the bad stuff. And this dude went through more bad stuff than we'll ever experience. He was always focused on the right thing. And he was always empowered because he was focused on the, the most beautiful thing, the most excellent thing, the greatest gift that he could have ever received, the greatest mercy that he could ever receive. This guy murdered Christians. And God reached down and touched him. And delivered him. He was going the wrong direction. This guy didn't forget what God did for him. That's key right there. You want a life change? You want to have a whole lot more joy and happy and peace and strength and health and all the good things? You want to be able to overcome when all you're surrounded by is negativity? Just remember what God's already done for you. Bam! I'm telling you. It will put some jack in your backpack. It will get you going. It will give you the sight and the clarity. You will be speaking life. You will be operating with a loving spirit, not an unloving spirit. You'll be making a difference. You'll have the impact that you're called to have. It goes on to say, granting us salvation, opportunities, and blessings. We do not, we do not get discouraged nor lose our motivation. We are pressured in every way, hedged in, but not crushed, perplexed, unsure of whether we'd even find a way out, but not driven to despair, hunted down and persecuted, but not deserted to stand alone, struck down, but never destroyed, always carrying around in the body. The revelation of what Jesus did. So that the resurrection life of Jesus also may be shown in our body. See, we're showing people one thing or another. You're showing. You're showing. You're showing. You're showing. Okay. You want proof? I'll give you proof. Little Eliana and Talia get picked up at Christie's house today. They had a great sleepover. But Eliana had a face. Sad face, mad face, not a glad face. I said, Eliana, you want to know a secret? Grampy knows exactly what you're thinking. I can tell by your face what you're thinking. She's so full of joy. Her middle name is Joy. It doesn't take long for her to turn around. And she gave me that. Oh, guys, first, first she goes from this to, oh, he knows what's really going on inside of my head, inside of my heart. I'm not being thankful at this moment because Judah gets to go with the Garvey boys. So she started thinking reasons that she, not to be thankful. Her joy level went down, her peace level down. It showed on her feet, face. What's going on inside of your heart is showing. It's gonna show you whether you're making pearls inside of your heart and manifesting diamonds. It's gonna, you're, it's gonna come out. You can pretend, but it's gonna finally come out. So what's going on in the inside, whether you're embracing things and rejoicing or resenting them, whether you're making pearls like an oyster or spitting out and not making pearls makes a big difference to other people around you because she's affecting Talia. And so. I loved her out of that. I said, let's play a game. 
How many things we can be thankful for before we get to church? You're going to love this. I said, do it in your head. One thing you do to Eliana is don't tell her the rules of the game and then change them. Because right after that, I said, okay, say them out loud. She said, I'm already up to number 10 in my head. The girl is an A-plus student. You give her an assignment, bam, it's done. So I said, no, I think we're supposed to verbalize them. I think we're supposed to get them out. And Talia goes, I went to sleep right away. And, 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 and everybody clapped for me in the kitchen. <laughs> Auntie Christy, I'm telling you, we have to realize the littlest thing, how much it makes an impact on people. Auntie Christy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, all the kids come down from sleeping at her house. And she's like the mama in the boot, you know, the nursery rhyme uh, girl. Uh, what's that called? Old mother? Mother Hubbard. Okay, don't tell Christy I call her Mother Hubbard, okay? Oh, she's here. Ow! Oh, just when I thought she was hiding. Okay. So Christy's inspired by the Holy Ghost after hearing such anointed preaching for 75,000 years coming out of her father. She's inspired by the Holy Ghost to clap. And everybody joins Mother Hubbard and starts clapping for Talia. Talia is talking about it two hours later, three hours later. I went to sleep and I woke up. Do you, one thing. I mean, how long did it take to edify? How long did it take to congratulate? How long did it take Auntie Christie and the rest of the team to take that moment? I don't know, five seconds, six seconds? It impacted her heart. They gave love. They encouraged. They made a difference. In seconds. You can destroy someone's heart in seconds, and you can make someone's heart in seconds. And the Lord wants to elevate us to a new level of diligence. Where we recognize, what the heck's going on inside of me? Am I making oysters or not? Am I manifesting diamonds or not? What the heck am I doing? And what spirit's coming out of me? And how many excuses am I making? What the heck is going on around here anyways? Eliana cooperated with me. She starts listing them off. I'm going like this. I'm driving. I'm focused. I'm going like this with my hands. And she's saying this thing and this thing. I mean, she was nailing it. All the reasons she was thankful. And her joy level, her peace level, her strength level all started to come back. Her facial expression all started to come back. Because she started to meditate on the things she was thankful for. So I'm going one, yeah, two, yeah, mommy and daddy, yeah, cousins, yeah, Auntie Christy, yeah, Uncle Bill, yeah, family, yeah, and I'm the cheerleader in the front, now I'm going one, two, three, four, five, she's stuck on number nine, and out of nowhere she says, chocolate cake. <laughs> I lost it, almost had to pull over on the side of the road. The girl, I said, chocolate cake made the top 10. Thank God for chocolate cake. <laughs> Apostle Paul, going through hell on earth with a constant revelation that he had been given heaven as a gift, never lost sight. He never went down. Even if his ship literally went down in the ocean, he didn't go down with it. Gets to shore, gets bit by a snake. I mean, the guy had all kinds of excuses to resent God, to not believe, and he can't. <laughs> he goes on to say, for our momentary light distress this passing trouble is producing for us an eternal weight of glory let me interject or paraphrase eternal weight of pearls a fullness beyond all measure surpassing all comparisons a transcendent splendor and an endless blessedness so we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are unseen 
For the things which are visible are temporary, just brief and fleeting. But the things which are invisible are everlasting and imperishable. BAM! What you're looking at makes a big difference. Are you looking at the unseen or the seen? Are you, is, is the attitude, your plain attitude, going down? Are you nose diving? It just tells you right away. You're, you're looking at the wrong direction. You're, you're being distracted. Now here's the deal, and I'm gonna finish to make it very clear. So you can walk away with something very clear, very plain. Habakkuk, write the vision. Make it clear, make it plain. I'm engraving it into your heart and the Lord is so merciful that I came up with, I mean, the Lord had me share more stories to make you laugh today. I feel like Mary Poppins. Let the medicine go down with a little bit of sugar or honey or whatever people use nowadays. Definitely not essential oils that stink, but. As soon as you get that hmm inside, please stop avoiding it. Please stop operating in a survival skill of saying it doesn't matter. It matters. If it gets into the mantle of your heart, it will kill you with bitterness. Bitterness means a crissity. Crissid, a crick, a cr A C R I D I D Y. I can spell, fortunately, better than I could. Acridity. It means poison. I'm giving you the actual translation words. Bitterness means acridity. Acridity means poison. This is serious stuff that I'm talking about. You cannot afford to not pay attention. You have an advantage over non-Christians. You have the Holy Spirit inside of you going bleep, 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 letting you know. Stop. Don't. Please. Ask God to help you. Stop avoiding. When you're annoyed, frustrated, irritated, agitated, you need to irrigate. Immediately. You must irrigate immediately. When you're irritated, you need to be irrigated with words of spirit and life. You need to say, here's what I do all the time, and I'm asking God to help me get better. As soon as I feel that, huh, whether it's little or big, I say, Lord, help me. I don't want to be annoyed. I don't want to be frustrated. I don't want to be aggravated. I don't want to be irritated. I don't want to be agitated. I don't want to be any of that because if I pass by this moment, to secrete love and wisdom. If I pass by this moment to do the right thing in my irritation, an unloving spirit will come out of me. I will do damage to someone else's heart. I must pay attention as a soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ, as a student of the Lord, as a son of God, as a friend of God, as an ambassador of Christ. I must pay attention. I cannot allow these floating things under my skin, these sands, get into the mantle of my heart and do damage because then I will do damage to somebody else and I am accountable. I know it's summertime. And maybe this is too hot of a message for slothful summer. But the Lord is not on vacation. And we are not called to be on vacation in our heart. You can go to the beach. You can go on vacation. Do whatever the Lord is telling you to do. Make sure the Lord is telling you to do it. But ever, don't ever go on vacation when it comes to this. People come back from vacation and they have post-dramatic vacation stress. Because their hope was in a vacation and not their vocation of making pearls and manifesting diamonds. Bam! Pray for them. Before I pray for you, uh, Pastor has no idea what scripture we used last week. Can you tell him? Habakkuk or Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 2, write the vision. So God has a message that he's wanting us to get. And if you remember, I held up invitations. I said God had an invitation for each of you, and they were different. And he had something he wanted to share with you, something he wanted to put in your hand that you would run with, that you would engrave upon your heart. 
And so ask him for what that is, uh, because I believe he has it. But generally, I believe today there's one for everybody, and that is you need to uh, activate yourself with this message this week by writing down, I'm going to say 10 things, and you can bring them into me next week for our testimony wave, but 10 things that the Lord is doing for you in your life, 10 things That's that awesome. you can be thankful for. And keep it in your Bible, keep it on your mirror, keep it in your toothbrush drawer, or I have a drawer, but however, <laughs> somewhere where you go often. And I want you to pay attention to that list. Why? Because we need to be thankful. And when we're thankful, our heart is open like a gateway for the blessings and your mind to remember quickly. But if it's closed off, your mind cannot process. It's going, it's going to get stuck in the... the uh, irritation, which becomes the resentment, the bitterness, and the poison released in your system. So that's my encouragement for you. So, Father, I just ask for your spirit to continue to seal this word upon the hearts of your people, that as you have written the vision before them, as you have encouraged them that correction is not a bad word, as you have encouraged them to remember the good things that you have done and placed in our lives, I am asking for a total cementing of the thankful message of recognizing that irritations can be opportunities for us. If we take them, that we will be making pearls, we will be making diamonds, that we will be the shining light that you've called us each to be. Father, help us to stop in that split second and recognize and remember what you have taught us. Engrave it upon our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Lisa.